Hello, this is a note about using the tides and currents uh, function of QTVLM, and, uh, which is a very nice uh, program, very nice feature. Uh, but when you first download the program, these are the vector, they won't work. And so here's where you turn on the uh, tides, that's this little tide gauge, and here's a little current arrow up here in the menu bar toolbar. Now if I click that it says no harmonics, sorry, and, this, and you'll get the same thing when you click the currents. So we have to go to, uh, to menu, preferences, that's called configuration in the PC version, uh, but the same place. Then you go to grips and harmonics, and I have it loaded, I have it loaded, I just don't have it turned on. And we have two videos about how you load these, one for Mac and one for PC those two videos. So you highlight that. Now while we're here, I would say uh, turn on all three of these buttons. If they're, you know, if these aren't on, turn them on. The, and I'll show you what these are. These are the labels. This is a different little nicer display of the vectors, current vectors, and current arrows with color. Oh, no, these are both the labels, and this is with the color. So turn all three of those on and then we're good to go. That's the only real settings you've got. I'll explain this one in a moment. It's not crucial at all. Okay, and then say okay. And then remember, you have to roll. If this is hidden like that, you gotta go up here, roll, roll it up, and get down here and say okay. All right, now we're back. And so I'm, I'm actually looking at a raster chart, and I can turn on the currents, loading harmonic. So, oh no, sorry, the uh, tides. And these, you see the little tide vectors here like that and we could also this is a raster chart i mean you can we can also use uh oh that's the point and there's a, a vector charts a, a enc charts but i think for looking at the tides and currents for now just remember you can always have charts when you need them let's just shut that off and look at this way which is a lot a lot cleaner and so here are these gauges and this is the label that you turn off if you have those labels shut off this won't be there and then you can go up here and when you put your cursor on there uh, it will tell you the value of the tide and of the, it says it's a 0.6 feet at the moment it's falling and then uh, it's falling. And now the number that is, oh, let me just see if I can point and talk. Okay, it says the previous tide was a high water at 707, and that was 6.6, .6, and it's going toward a low water of uh, 0.5 at 1312. Now we can see, and the time that this is talking about here, then doesn't list the time, but the time will be this time displaying right here on your screen like this. And if that's not now, you can press, and if you want it to be now, you can press this now button. All right, and then to see the graph, you just go up here and you put your cursor on, not, uh, on there and then right click, right click the tide gauge. In other words, don't right click the label, that won't, that's trying to access a chart which is not there. But you right click the gauge and you say details. And then you get this beautiful picture of the tides and here, uh, and this red line, this red line here is this time, uh, this t is, let's see if that's 1239. Yeah, 1239 is 0.64 feet. And this you can change, you know, look at, change the dimensions and so forth. And then you can read the values going up and down with that gauge like that, very nice. Now the other option, okay, now what do we have here? Oh, nothing, There's that's there. And now this is where you would change like, um, uh, I can go back, or you know, I can go back. What am I going back? A whole day, 12. Yeah, this is going a day at a time, like that. Or you can go back and look at a, some earlier time. For example, you're planning, you want to plan something ahead, then you can go up and look at the currents, uh, look at the, I mean, look at the tides sometime in the future and so forth. Or if you're working an exercise, like our workbook has practice problems from 1999, you would just go and, you know, set this to 1999 and go back to the July 4th or whatever it is and get your tides that way. Now, when you do that, when you go back and do that, go back in time like that, they're going to be really close because these are good harmonics. The harmonics we loaded here are the latest ones from the U.S. government, and they are very good data. If And then what you might see is very slight differences. Now, 
that I don't know if those slight differences will affect your answers on working a problem, a textbook problem from a long time ago. But if it's any consolation, the value that you're reading today of what the current and tides were in 1999 is probably right. In other words, they they know these values better, and so the actual four predictions made now for something in the past are probably better than the actual data was when they published it for the first time. But that's kind of academic point. Okay, so let me uh, stop with that, with that, and then let's look at the uh, currents. Let's look at the currents. Let's shut this off, and then put on the currents, loading the current. And then so the currents look like this, and then again, what you would do is, uh, when you, oh, okay, so here's the complication with the currents, and it's tied to the sophistication of this program. Each of these stations in modern, in the, in the, in the, in the more recent measurements from NOAA, they, they have data at various depths. So if we go here to like this station here and look at the details, they have, NOAA has data there at 20 feet, 56 feet, and 118 feet. And this program will let us look at whatever those are. You know, and if you care to know about it, you can, you can study that. But when you're doing navigation, you would probably want this up closest to the depth of your own boat. You know, so you would use a 20-foot depth. There are some cases, um, oh, I, I'd have to, there's a, there's a few cases, maybe even Agate Pass, where they've got data at multiple shallow depths, two, five, nine, 15 feet. And then you have to look at them and do an average. But, and so here are the currents, and this is again this time. These are, and you've got the depths here, and you read the values this way. And then you can also go back to different times with the currents, same way, cancel. The other thing, too, you can annotate these if you want to. Again, the time that's pink here is the time that's here, which is uh, technically equal to the grib time. If I have this program, QTC, uh, QTVLM is, a, is a oriented towards a sailor's navigation to a large part, so they always have the wind in mind. So if we want to annotate this, then it will annotate the wind over the period of the grip file you have. So if I want to just look at this area here, and let's say I can, and I can also, because they require that, I, to annotate, you can, you can add it very quickly. I could just go push this button, for example, uh, uh, to download five days of wind data. Now, I'm not looking at it, but I could turn it on here, and then you can go to the clock here and set, let, show me the wind at this particular time, and you know, and then you've got it or something, or you can say go to the wind right now, and that's there. So when you annotate the wind, you can annotate it several, annotate the current several ways. Let me shut the wind off for now. Uh, it has to be loaded to annotate. But uh, then, so uh, here's one hour steps. So if I did one hour steps, I can step through the current in one hour steps like that. You see the current, this is Admiralty Inlet where the current can be very big. Or I can turn on the movie here and it'll do it by itself. You see stepping through here I'm not sure if there's a place, actually I don't know if there's a place we can slow it down and speed it up, I don't know. It's not a feature we use very often. Um, but anyway, but you can step through it if you like this way. And you could start at any particular time or just always go back to right now. Um, but anyway, there are the currents. Um, let's see, is there anything else? We've shown the depths and so forth. Well, that's the main thing. I will be adding almost immediately, I'm going to add a video on how we test the harmonics to see if the harmonics are actually giving us the right data. That's crucial in all cases. You will find when you make that test that some programs are not displaying the right currents. But, but we always want to check. No matter what program we're using, we want to check that. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now on how to use the tides and currents and then move on to the next one. Hello again. I want to add a sort of a part two 
uh, part two to this uh, tides and currents, uh, not just so much using the uh, not just using the tools, but just as a way that you can go into an area and make a decision ahead of time to by looking at where the where the currents are and how strong they are. Like like you say, you have to go around one of these islands or something. You can come up here, uh, put in a forecast a grib up to. You know, you can go 16 days ahead as far as that goes, but the, you know, the wind won't be very good beyond you know, five days or so. But then you can then go and then just step through the currents to, or you're doing a cruise, you're just cruising. You wanna know what time to do something. You can look at this kind of layout here and then just step through it and look at the patterns, you see. There's the sort of the right time to be going north there and there's the wrong time. And see, that's the wrong time by three knots here. Bellingham Channel, where is, um, yeah, this can be here. Here's three knots. This can easily be uh, even more. So anyway, that's a way that you can step through and, and sort of plan your routes about where the currents are, you know, what time to uh, think through that. On a bigger scale, like you can look at any one, you know, you can look at any one station and, you know, get a feeling for that, and so forth. But the other thing just, okay, so that was one thing. The second thing is, uh, let me look at the, uh, let me actually, let me just shut off all that and go, I wanna just go out here to the coast. Okay, let me let me pause here. I want to show something with the tides, um, just as an illustration. Um, so here, uh, let me turn them back on. I think I have this set right. I want a wave coming in here. Yeah, okay. So here is a tidal wave coming in where the tide is zero at the coast, zero at the coast. And as you come in, this is about 80 miles along here. So it's like a point zero tide here. When you're up to Port Angeles, this area you got two feet. Here you're going just to get entering down into Admiralty Inlet and Puget Sound. Now you see it's getting steeper, 3.8 feet. And then going on down, seven, eight, eight feet, eight feet down, 10, down to 11 feet. So you can almost see that uh, those uh, tidal lines, the co-tidal lines coming in as the wave moves in there uh, using that uh, demo.